Hey all, welcome back to another unboxing video. Uh, this time of the Ravel Handley Page Hayford Mark 1, 2 or 3. Has all three options in this kit. Uh, 172nd scale, this was originally uh, released back in 1980. It's a matchbox kit. Uh, Ravel then re-released it, I believe it was 95. Uh, the original Hayford uh, it was a bomber, it was the last biplane bomber from uh, for the RAF. Uh, it was introduced, I think, mid 1930s, just literally two months before the Second World War started. It was declared obsolete. Uh, luckily, luckily, there were still enough of them lying around that they were used as trainers and tugs. Right, so, as per usual, we'll do the outside of the box and have a look at the instructions and the sprues. Right, so, outside, nice lovely artwork off the Hayford itself. Uh, this is a limited edition kit, though already open. Look at size, um, it is literally just the bottle kit itself. On one side, we have paint guide, that's not focusing. Mm, kind of focused there. Yes, yeah, so we've got the paints. Yeah. Just a little bit about the actual model itself and just the usual what the thing is. Side, it's uh, they get fun artwork again, limited edition kit. And skill level four. I look at the other side, which is the exact same. And the back here. There we go. Last uh, little bit of history. You can pause if you want to read that. And on the back of this box, there we go. Uh, they'll have five skill levels, and they deem this one a level four. Uh, and just a little bit regarding the company itself and just the skill level. Okay, let's open this up. Straight off, we have the instructions. Nice little booklet. And the plastic kit that's still sealed up. And in true matchbox style, in three, three colours, possibly two. Normally it's three colours, but I can only see two in that. We'll have a look later. Did a lot of flash. And we have the decals. I'm just going to leave those there. And a little bit colourful. Okay, let's have a look at the instructions. Jump cut to get the instructions up. Again, a little bit more about the um, Hayford. Went to there we go, focuses. Oh, it's 33 or so on the outside. Yep, 33 there. And literally just... Obviously 37. And yet one thing I read said 39. Okay. Before... Read before you start. Guaranteed you've made a model before, you don't even bother with that bit. If you've not made a model before, you probably still don't read that bit. Useful guide of what all the little things mean. A clear plastic, make, we need to make two of them, decal, tape it together, wait for stuff to dry, glue and do not glue. The paint guide. Uh, Revell are one of these where they don't tell you the paints that you need to use, it tells you with a letter. And if you just look down here, for example, uh, the machine gun is apparently a G. You need to come back over here, find G, to find it is still metallic. And I think these are Revell colour codes, so a colour number, so 91 would be still metallic. I don't think they use that anymore. I could be wrong. Visual guide, so you've got four sprues for this kit, plus the clear plastic. First off, it starts with the ventral turret, if I got that correctly. You can see here, 
goes underneath. Always known as the infamous dustbins. Quite a few uh, bomb early early pre-war bombers had um, dustbins. Right, I'm guessing they're actually that bit. Not too sure there, but basically just paint the underside. Lower half and upper half of the fuselage together. Cockpit. The cockpit consists of a whole seat that you glue straight onto a back piece. Yeah, some of these details on the other kit aren't that great, but yeah, it's enough to give the representation. Uh, control column plus steering wheels. No, they're not technically steering wheels, but you know what I mean. Again, okay, now you've got to paint up the front half of the fuselage and glue it together. That is, it only shows that side, but it will be this side as well. Put another crew member in as well. All the windows. Um, for those that have never done these things before and Clear plastic, do not use the um, the usual model glue that you would for the normal plastic. Use PVA or Pacific clear plastic glue. Uh, PVA clears dry. Um, if you use the plastic glue that you use to glue these bits together, uh, it will come out foggy. Top rear machine gunner and tailpiece. There you go, and then you can put the front machine gunner in as well. That's extra bit. There's the tailpiece, put them together, and the lower wing with bomb racks or something else. I'm guessing not bombs. This is where you got to decide which version you're going to make because it has different propellers. Different propellers or different radiators by the looks of things. So, yeah, it's. Mark 1 and 2, that, Mark 3, I'm guessing has that and that instead of that. Ah, so Mark 1 and 2, you have that, you have the twin propeller. The Mark 1 and 2, you then have to put that radiator underneath, but for the Mark 3, put that radiator. Uh, Vail, you been making the Mark 1 or the Mark 1? I just spotted this bit as well. <laughs> if you're making the Mark 1, which would be, I think on the plus side, the side view here shows a Mark 1, if it is indeed correct, with only a single propeller, where the Mark 2 has twin. And then you have the mark blank, which doesn't tell you anything. So, okay, it looks like you may have to actually look up, try to do a little bit of research on this to figure out what version you do want to make up. In fact, let's just... Nope, we won't jump. I was going to jump to the color, uh, the paint guides, just have a look, but we'll hold off on that for a minute. We'll come back. Upper wing plus engine one. Upper wing again plus engine two. Wheels. Uh, it says Mark 1 there, but I it's probably something different on the model itself to represent two different um, wheel flarings. Put the upper wing onto the model. And put the lower wing on. The lower wing being way underneath had a, had a bonus to that. We'll get on to in a minute. Some extra bits, put the wheels on, more extra bits, put some machine gunners so you can actually arm the two gunners. It's for the tail and then some ladders. Uh, as you can kind of guess, okay, let's bring the artwork back out real quickly. There we go. As you can see, this model, uh, the fuselage is right up in the air. Add a bonus, so it's the engines. So you can have people working down here on the bombs quickly while the engines are running running up. The Cat 22 is because it's so high up, you would naturally need ladders to try and get up to it. Uh, but it would have a good view. Though if you're also afraid of heights, A, what you're doing in an airplane, and B, don't look down. The 
the bomb racks. So you got little flare bombs, little bombs, and bigger bombs. Interestingly, I don't know quite the decision for this, but they say you got your bombs, but if you're putting bombs on the middle rack here, they're half bombs. They're not two halves of the same bomb and you literally glue them together. Nope, they literally just provide you with half bombs. No idea why. Alternatively, you're not doing the middle bomb rack. Just do the outer bombs. Which I'm guessing what that mystery piece is there on the other page. Paint guides. So we got the Mark III with double propeller and camouflage. A, B, and the underside of A. So if we can force this away, you then have to jump back to the paint guide. So we have A and B, ah, typical REF colours. Dark green, dark earth. I forgot to say, what was the interior? D. Gunship grey. Hmm, okie dokie. Was expecting interior grey green, but looking at all the options here, we don't have interior grey green. And that's what, what gunship grey is, but I'm thinking more pale grey with that one. Right, let's jump back to the colour schemes here. Only a few decals to put on, not a lot on these older kits. Doing them a couple of places. May have problem putting that um, decal on, the serial number on the underwings, because there's the bombs around there somewhere. I think possibly there, but mm, be careful. Double check on that when you make your version. Then we have the Mark One. The Mark One has a single propeller. Is there any clone radiators? Yes, by the looks of things, that has an extended radiator, whereas this does not. Contrary to what the instructions like to show you, is there any It's saying A is that, that apparently that pattern. If you look at some of the old instructions, they have patterns to distinguish between the different colours to help identify them. So you have A here, and then we have a white plane with code A. It's dark green again, and it's literally dark green all the way over. Uh, if you make a lot of RAF planes, especially the brown and green camouflage, you probably have quite a bit of green paint left over. So that's Mark 1 at A. And the Mark 2 has no extended radiator and the twin propellers again. And is pure plain green. So, interesting. It looks like an interesting one. Uh, I'm sure some of the collectors out there are going to hate the next bit because I'm going to open the baggie with the sprues in. Uh, stuff we do. Okie dokie. Um, as you put in your comments, comment section, when you get these collector type kits, do you actually make them or do you keep them to one side? I'm curious what people's thoughts on this are. Okay, a little jump cut to get the sprues up. And we got all the sprues. So, looks like it's just the two colours. Right, first one. Wings, got some basic detail showing the ribbing underneath. From the fact Fluid wing and fabric type wings. That must be the bomb racks. Da -da -da -da. Yep, bomb racks. Nice way to tell. You gonna focus? Okay, oh yeah, it's number four. 37 that piece. Some of these you find it on the wings, some of them on the tabs. Sorry. Not too bad. Being an 80s kit, detail not expecting too much. Can't get the sprue, there we go. That is the... That looks like, yep, that's the lower wing. So those were the upper wings on the other side. More lower wings. Massive wings on this thing, spot that and... end. 
it just didn't mould properly. All the colours didn't mix properly there. There's the infamous dustbin. As I say, quite a lot of planes pretty well had um, central turret design like that. It literally dropped down when they're in flight and then um, when they've had enough of it, they just raise it back up. So Hayford was so far off the ground, it probably didn't even need to have that feature. It just climbed into it. Right, the inside. <coughs> Excuse me. Inside, you got your engines. See the inside of the fuse larger. That's probably the bit they were saying to paint up. I didn't have a clue where it was. There it is. Keeps why it says to paint that bit up. You're going to struggle to actually see the top there. Engines, engines, fuse large, which about 20 centimetres long by the looks of things there. My first estimation. I know the set on the outside of the box, but. Flip them over and. Yeah, nicely detailed. I say nicely detailed, it's basic detailing. Raised panel lines on. Oops, helps you can see what I'm putting to now. Raised panel lines on the engines. You don't necessarily care what you expect. If you're skilled enough, you'll sand those off and put them back in yourself with a knife. But um, I'm the last time I tried to do that, my straight line was like so. Was, no. All the engines and the front of the fuselage just there. And to change the pace, the next spoon on the list, clear plastic, which looks fairly clear, though you're not going to see all too much anyway, because, well, what you are going to see, it's all the open, exposed to the elements, because it's an open cockpit design. Mm, a little smudgy, but... Right, and then to change it again, Grey plastic! So yeah, there's only two two colours in this, not the usual matchbox for free. I'm sure somebody's going to correct me later on that. So yeah, this seems to be more flashy. The green, green spruce didn't seem too bad, but this seems flashy as anything. Bombs. The half bombs. More bomb racks. The diddy bombs. And God, they are tiny. 50 pounders, maybe? Not 50 pounders. Uh, don't know. Somebody will correct me, there's your flares. No idea what the little propeller things are. Again, somebody will tell me, hopefully. A couple of machine guns, the exhausts. The wheel bays, we'll have a look on that on the outside. But potentially, I just spotted it. Do you have an uh, enclosed wheel, the underside enclosed, or open? Just even change the angle so you can actually see it a bit better. There you go. Just about make it out. The crew, we'll have a look at if they jelly babies or not in a minute. A couple of ladders. And the cockpit. Propellers. The detail on the instrument panel is. There is raised detail. Not cutting, you're going to just have to have a word on it, the video ain't. Actually, you can just about make it out there, hopefully. But yeah, there's a little raised detail to represent the dials. There's the um, control columns. One of the machine guns again. Um, and there you go, more half bombs. So you have all this lot, all half bombs. More bombs, one's a bomber of course, so naturally, what kind of bomber would not have bombs? That's to put the, um, depending on if you're having a single was it the Mark II or three or the Mark One? Whether you'd have the short W bit at the front for the Mark One or the long bit for the Mark Two and Three. Twin propeller, single propeller. Flashy wheels. Right. Pilots, do they look like jelly babies? They don't look too bad actually. There's some nice detailing on there. Apologies, it's not coming out that well. There you go, might just make it out. But yeah, they don't look like jelly babies. That's impressive for an 80s kit. But yeah, 
that's so and uh, that was the last three of it true unless you really want to see it there's the bag it came in held together held shut with cellar tape or sticky tape there you go i've actually only rolled that one over oh nice lovely little kit well little um not quite the right word nice big kit um looks like it's gonna be interesting to make and paint paint actually be quite easy though all green so i may with the clear with the colored plastic actually undercoat it with a different color like gray or something and then put the green back over the top if i go with the green version or if i go with the camouflage version like this one so yeah if, um say so if you like if you like the video put a like in uh subscribe to get more of these videos i'll hopefully do a review and possibly thinking of doing a little paint one soon as well so yeah stay tuned for them Okay, thanks. Bye.